On the first day of October, Halloween gave to me a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to a new 31 Days of Halloween. I am your pal Bo. I will be here for all 31 days. Uh, in each and every Ding Dong Day, we are going to be looking at a different horror movie. Uh, but this year, I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, if, if you're a listener to The Dark Parade, the show that I do, that's all horror movie-y, then you will know that uh, I have not been able to regularly put out episodes just... Uh, my schedule uh, in my first year of teaching, which was, you know, a, a pretty foolish thing to do at middle age to just decide to change careers into something that is incredibly difficult and demanding. But I did it anyway, and I'm an idiot. But I, I love it, uh, all, the, all that stuff. So uh, as a result, I've been able to put out regular episodes. So I, this will be an episode a day, however, because it is October. It is the Halloween season. Uh, we have commitments to one another, and uh, this is my commitment to you, that we will we will do a look at uh, 31 different movies. Like I said, I want to do something a little different, though, and I wanted to do uh, a few series uh, in, in the stretch of these 31 days. And one of the series that I wanted to do, and the one that we're going to start with, is the Subspecies series. And the reason is, is because for a long time, I wanted to do that as a, sort of a deep dive for Dark Parade. And, uh, you know, time and wherewithal just didn't allow. But I wanted to go back and revisit these movies because I remember them fondly, question mark, uh, <laughs> from my childhood. Uh, or if not my childhood, my teen years. I distinctly remember. Here's what I remember, folks. Let's, let's get real. I remember being in college and getting stoned and watching the subspecies movies. And there were a bunch of them, and uh, I didn't remember a lot about them when I went to revisit them, other than I remember Radu, and I remember the drooling, and I remember that they were all more connected than you feel like they ought to be. And all of that is still true, by the way. Uh, upon reflection, everything I just said still holds true, uh, the a, a head full of college pot or or not, all of those things stand, and you know I'm gonna mount a defense, an excuse, an argument, a justification for for doing these movies because they're not great. I'm not going to uh, sit here as I record this and try to convince you that the subspecies series is somehow a superior set of horror films because that would be a, a, a fool's endeavor. And I would be wrong to do so. I would I would lead you astray, and that is not my intent. But what I will say is that there is something to them beyond the the typical dreck, especially they're they're full moon movies, and we've talked about full moon uh, entertainment before in one form or another on a lot of the shows I do. But full moon, of course, uh, is the Charles Band company. They did a lot of cheap stuff, uh, a, a lot of cheap stuff very quickly at times. And with subspecies, though, it is uh, a guy named Ted Nicolau who, who wrote and directed these movies. And we're going to do all the subspecies movies, including Vampire Journals, which is not technically a subspecies movie, but characters from va Vampire Journals do bleed over, pun intended, into the subspecies series. And it is kind of part of the larger canon. So we're going to include that as well. And uh, so all of that stuff is done by Ted Nicolau, who had, you know, if, if not a vision, at least an idea of where he wanted to go with all of this. And I appreciate that. That is something I, as a viewer, enjoy. I like a director and writer who's like, look, this is all very stupid, but it is stupid in a way that is consistently stupid. And that's what I respect. If you're going to be stupid, be consistently stupid. And I think the subspecies movies are largely that. They have a tone. They have a vibe. And that's what I like. I, I don't necessarily like all the ins and outs of the movies, but I do like the vibe of them. There's something 
that uh, benefits, I think, from the fact that they shot these in Romania. I think it was just a money thing that they realized, like, oh, we can actually work with Romanian crews and and shoot on location in actual castles and stuff. And it's not going to cost us a lot of money, and it's going to look great. And it does. It does look great. When you see some of the interiors and exteriors of shooting in these castles, the production value looks great. Like, the bang for the buck for shooting in these places is really high. There's something genuinely convincing about shooting these movies in authentic locations. And so that part of it's kind of great. Um, so let, let's talk about this movie a little bit. The original subspecies, which begins with uh, King Vatislav, who is the king of the vampires, I think. Uh, some of the lore I'm a little questionable about, not because of marijuana, but just because I think that it plays a little fast and loose. And also there's not a lot of setup because it's basically King uh, Vladislav hanging out in the castle when his wayward son Radu returns home. And Radu is our villain for most of these movies, if not all. Um, and I should point out, there is a movie in the subspecies series that as I sit and record this, I have not seen yet. I think there are two that I haven't seen. So I've seen uh, up through subspecies four and there are two beyond that and, and one was released this very year in the year of our lord 2023 somebody actually made a subspecies movie and i have yet to see it and one of the reasons i wanted to do subspecies as the introductory series for 31 days of halloween is because of that because there is a subspecies movie at least one i think two that I haven't seen and I want to catch up to those and I want to watch all the other ones leading up to it. And if I'm doing that, I got to justify it some way, right? Like I got to be able to put my head on the pillow at night and feel like what I'm doing is a worthwhile endeavor uh, with my life, with the short time that I have left. And so uh, I have to justify watching subspecies in that way. So uh, getting back to King Vladislav and Redu rolls uh, up on King Vladislav who is just sitting around pondering the bloodstone, which is a thing we will get to in a moment. And Radu is played by Anders Hove. And it, well, how do you describe Radu? Radu is like Nosferatu with hair. He's got tremendously long fingers. And uh, with, with claws at the end, his shadow does funky shadow stuff. Uh, which is actually one of the things I really like about subspecies as a series is especially as it goes on the like him traveling via shadow is a really cheap but effective way to show that he's sort of flying around and moving around supernaturally. I like all that stuff. It's not quite, you know, Coppola's Dracula shadow play. It's not that good, but it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. And Redu comes in and in his Radu voice is like, Father! Because everything he does is this raspy hiss of, of a voice that he has. And he has, uh, like most of the vampires in this movie, it's sort of the double canines uh, that you've got. If you're a vampire, like you got sharp uh, two pairs of sharp teeth right beside each other. And uh, so there's no disguising that you're all vampired out. And Anders Hove in particular is like wearing these prosthetics so that his cheekbones and forehead and chin are accentuated. So that everything is all the like out of proportion and his hair is very, you know, 70s, 80s metal band, not quite long, but that kind of breezy blown back look and, you know, dressed like a, a goth kid. And is constantly drooling. Half of the scenes uh, Redu is in in every movie, blood is just drooling out of his mouth because he's a disgusting little shit vampire. <laughs> and uh, so he ends up uh, going home, killing his father, because there's uh, the big deal is that King Vladislav is about to die or retire or whatever from being King Vampire. And he is going to pass the mantle of authority onto Stefan, who is the son that is not a gross, disgusting shit vampire. And uh, Radu is pissed off about that because Radu is his oldest son and not a half-breed or something like that. There was some business about that that I don't remember clearly, and I don't think it's really that big a deal because Stefan is not a big deal in these movies as a rule. Um, and so Radu kills King Vladislav, 
originally is in prison. Like, it, you know, it's the old fashioned, I'm going to hit a button and a cage is going to fall on my shit vampire son. And he's stuck in there, but then he just, you know, breaks his fingers off like they're Twix bars and drops them on the floor. And they turn into these little gate demons. Like by by gate demons, I mean like the little monsters from the gate. Only they're not animated nearly as well. And I read some stuff about this uh, that is only so important. But they originally were played by men in suits, and they did you know forced perspective stuff and larger sets with these guys in suits uh, to to give them the diminutive look in the film. And then they realized like this doesn't really totally work, so we're going to do these puppets, and that doesn't totally work. They never look very good. Like, the gate looks a million times better with all its stop-motion stuff than the demons, the little... I And I assume these are the subspecies. Because otherwise, what is the subspecies of subspecies? I'm, a, I'm not 100% clear on that. Is the subspecies the vampires? Is the subspecies Redu's little, you know, golems that he creates? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not entirely certain. But he he breaks off his fingers. They turn into the little demons. The little demons raise the gate. He ends up killing his father. And now he has the bloodstone. And the bloodstone is this rock, this crystal. And in theory, it allows vampires to subsist without having to kill people, I think is the idea. But Radu is addicted to it. But for him, it is a drug. And it corrupts him and makes him more powerful. And so that's why... He wants the bloodstone is not only to get his rocks off by, you know, drinking this bloodstone thing, but also uh, because it will make him more powerful, I believe. And that's what he's after. He's after power. Although his grand plan is never really stated until later in the series. And then the grand plan is kind of dumb uh, or, or it's it's small. It's a really small scale plan. You know, it's not like Radu ever says. You know, we will turn the world into vampires and the night will become the day. There's none of that. He just <laughs> kind of wants to get laid and and rule the, the vampire community, I guess. But you only ever see a couple. So I don't know. Maybe later in the series we'll get into it. But anyway, uh, so n now that we have that set up, we introduce our other three characters uh, that are going to matter in this movie, kind of, which is uh, Mara, Lillian, and Michelle. These, uh, one of them is Romanian. Uh, she is a friend. The other two are Americans that have traveled over to do this historical uh, college trip where they're doing a paper or a project or something like that and researching the area around Castle Vladislav. But are curious because there's not a whole lot in the books about Castle Vladislav. There's, uh, like, it, it's real hush-hush. Like, Vla Vladislav Castle's real uh, under-the-table kind of stuff. And they're like, hey, how come? And then this is where Stefan pops up, who is, of course, the son of King Vladislav, even though we don't know that immediately. Although, given his smoky good looks and accent, we're pretty sure, like, all right, you're a vampire. Let's Let's dispense with any notions otherwise, please. But he shows up and is very charming. And Michelle, who will be a major character through the series, immediately is like, say, who's this hunk? And Stefan is also into her. But uh, he also goes home to talk to Radu. And Radu is like, I'm taking over. And Stefan's like, well, not if my good looks have anything to say about it. But I'm not doing anything about it now. And <laughs> so he takes off again. And then uh, the girls are kind of uh, researching around the castle, like physically around the, the castle grounds during the day. But then it turns to night and Radu gets uh, wise to their presence. And one girl is reaching into the castle to try to get in. And Radu, I don't, we never see it exactly, but I think he bites her arm. I think that's what happens is that he bites her arm and then she starts to get sick and he starts to creep into town to feed on her. And she slowly but surely dies. Uh, and I think that's Mara. No, that's Lillian. And then Mara, I think, is the one who, at a big carnival, um, she ends up getting snatched by Redu. And so Redu ends up like turning Mara and Lillian into, you know, the brides of Redu. Um, and then Stefan and Michelle 
and their love for one another have to go uh, to rescue them. And it turns out, of course, that they have been turned and there is some some hilarious nudity in this because all of the, again, it's a full moon movie. Every movie, you're going to get a little bit of boob. And in this case, it's, uh, I think it's Mara who is chained to a wall. She's already been turned, I think, but are bitten for sure. And she's just chained to a wall and uh, her shirt is ripped in such a way that her torso is largely covered except for her boobs. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for in a movie, which let's face it, when I was a kid in, uh, you know, the late nine, not, is it late nineties? I guess it was early nineties. This would have been shortly after I graduated high school that these movies start coming out. So, you know, in college it was like, say, let's rent a VHS tape with this lady on the cover being carried by a bunch of demons. That never happens in the movie, but there is uh, a, a little shit vampire dripping blood all the time, and there's some boobies and 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 some weird demon monsters. Even though, even if they don't carry uh, a woman around, anyway, I the, the cover alone it's got a good cover. Subspecies has a really great box art uh, cover, and uh, anyway, so there's some business about uh, the girls being turned, and then they're gonna carry Michelle into this uh, this chamber where Radu is going to claim Michelle right in front of Stefan to really stick it to him. And then he will rule the night or whatever, whatever his plan is here. And, uh, but, you know, Stefan ends up kind of breaking free and, uh, but not before Radu bites uh, Michelle. So she is now infected with vampirism and then there's some fighting around. There's some sword play that is not all that impressive. It feels very lackluster, to be fair. And uh, there's Radu and Stefan sword fighting. Michelle is killing one of her friends with a big pike uh, to set her free of the vampire curse and all. And uh, so, yeah, all of this is going on. It's supposed to be the big finale. It's not all that impressive. But it does happen, and that's something. And at the end of this, uh, Stefan ends up beheading uh, Radu. Or no, he doesn't behead him in this one. Uh, I think he just stabs him through the chest, and it smolders and whatnot, and he looks dead. Uh, and then Michelle is like, hey, I ended up getting bit. I need you to bite me so I don't have the Radu infection. I would rather have the Stefan infection, because that way I could turn out to be a good vampire and not a vampire that's a disgusting, drooling shit vampire. And so Michael, uh, not Michael, sorry, Stefan ends up biting Michelle. They go lay down in his coffin together, you know, kind of romantic as this somewhat sweeping music plays. And then at the end of it, we get a shot of Radu supposedly dead, but of course opening his eyes as his little, uh, golems up here. And that's the end of the movie. It, it's a real, like, to be continued on subspecies, which I don't know that Ted Nicola, I'm sure the, the idea was, hey, we're going to make one, and if it's successful, we'll give you money to make another one. And in this case, subspecies was certainly, um, uh, you know, enough of a, uh, a success that they were going to go on and to make more for Ted Nicolau or uh, with Ted Nicolau at the helm. And they end up making a bunch of these, right? Like, we're going to talk... The whole first week is pretty much going to be subspecies movies. Um, but I I kind of dig that. Like, there, there's something about, like I said, this continuing series that takes the canon reasonably seriously, if not entirely seriously, that I really like. I like the fact that subspecies has a continuing story that Ted Nicolau, you know, let's say it might get strained. Maybe he didn't have <laughs> an idea for seven movies. But he definitely uh, had an idea for a couple. And and I think this first one does a good job of setting things up. And really, the thing that makes subspecies worth talking about and worth watching, if indeed it is worth watching, and you can make the argument it's not. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. 
Uh, although I would kind of recommend it. If you've never seen it, give it a look. Because like I said, it's got a vibe. And Radu is kind of striking. Like he's he's creepy and disgusting. But that's kind of what's striking about him. Like that constant drooling and Anders Hove hissing all of his lines. And it's, you know, to say that it's over the top does a disservice to over the top performance. He doesn't just chew the scenery. Like he eats his way through it like a pack of moths. Uh, it is... A, a wild performance and he's at 11 and everybody else is at like a four or five and, and playing it kind of straight. And he's just like, ah, fuck all that. I'm going to be as arch an arch character as has ever been. And, and that's kind of what I like about it. Like he's really gloriously gross and, and disgusting and lascivious and uh, all that stuff. So he makes for a good villain. Radu despite sounding like a popular form of uh, pasta and spaghetti sauce, uh, is a pretty good vampire villain. Radu Vladislav. So uh, I like that. And I like the first subspecies well enough. It's fun. It's a fun movie. It does drag uh, in the middle. It's got kind of a soggy middle part where after Radu is first introduced... And you're introducing all of the girls and Stefan is showing up and all of that stuff. And nothing's really going on for a while there. But then once the girls start dying and we get to the, the castle of Vladislav, that gets to be pretty fun. So it's not a perfect movie by any stretch, but it's, it's, it's kind of fun. And it's a great background horror movie. Like if you are carving up some pumpkins, which I hope you are, if you're carving up some pumpkins, this is a great movie to throw on in the background while you're when you're cooking your pumpkin seeds and and getting your bowls out and putting up your decorations and that kind of thing and then you hear the disgusting jit vampire start to say something and you poke your head in like what is Radu up to oh that scamp he's probably drooling over some woman's leg again and uh because of that that'll happen in this movie anyway um that subspecies i enjoy it I like the subspecies, uh, the, the first one. Do I like the second one as much? Well, you'll have to tune in tomorrow, loyal listeners, for more on the saga of disgusting shit vampire Redu and Michelle and Stefan. Spoiler, Stefan ain't gonna make it very far. And uh, the, the other doings, because it does definitely take a leap. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. So, hey, uh, it's the first day of Halloween season. It's the first day of October. Things are kicking off. I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Uh, I'm happy to be with you and uh, we'll see where this crazy uh, season takes us. Uh, we're not doing nothing but series. There are going to be some movies, some newer movies that I want to catch up to. So some stuff I've never seen before, some stuff I've heard good things about, some classics, of course, as we approach the end of October. Uh, I'll dispense with all this. Uh, let's do some some movie series nonsense and really get into some classics that we haven't talked about yet on 31 Days of Halloween. So all that is ahead of us. This is merely the beginning. Death is only the beginning. And this is La Petite Morte, uh, the little death, a.k.a. an orgasm. This is a little orgasm of a, of a podcast, I like to think, um, or like to think as of right now. Anyway, have a great October 1st, everybody. I will be back with you on October 2nd for Subspecies 2. Talk to you then.